Okay, so I want to look at this. I want to analyze some posters, and this is one of the ones that Mike showed. And <clears throat> I, he shows it. I found out it from him, and he shows it, and I show it because this is just about the most perfect poster I've ever seen. And I it's didn't. My favorite too, Bruce. Just it's incredible. He did a great job. <laughs> until I started analyzing it, and mm -hmm. I, I'm going to show you um, eye tracking data in just a minute, and that just backs up everything we're going to say. So let's look at the feature of this poster. So the main result is right in the center of the poster. Here's the traditional title up here. There's no reason they couldn't be the same, but he's got them slightly different here. It's right in the center. Not only is it in the center, he's got a graphic that is relevant. So we're, as botanists, we perhaps don't know that supercomputers are used to model turbulence. This is a model of turbulence. This image is directly relevant to what he's saying in the poster. So when someone walks by this poster and they see an image right in the center and they know it's of turbulence and they know he's got something to do with, he's talking about floating numbers and these other weird kinds of posit numbers, shorter versions of um, representation complex numbers. They know it's about turbulence and they're interested already. And not only that, he's got a graphic visualization of the difference between what a 16-bit float looks like, all of these binary representations here, and a 16-bit posit, this little thing here. So he's got that right in the center of the poster too. And then he's got on the sides lots of data that he's going to use when he talks. Now, this poster was only shown while he was present. There were about a thousand other posters up at the same time as what he says. This is one of those meetings in Europe where there's just huge numbers of people going. So he had to stand out in that. His poster was never up when he wasn't there. So it did not have to explain anything when he wasn't there. So that's a big advantage to him because he can attract people with this center part of the poster. He then has the data that he needs here to explain to them why 16-bit posits are better, are better, and these are comparisons of simulations. Now, let's just suppose that this poster was up when he wasn't there. How would they be able to understand that? There's a QR code down here. You're going to see from the eye tracking data that people are going to look at it right away. This links to a full pad paper. This there's a published manuscript on this, and this links to that manuscript. So even if they didn't understand these diagrams, this QR code links to it. Let's look at some other things about the design. You might have noticed that this design has a very substantial uh, substantiality to it. It really feels like it's present in that, and that's because he's got these nice white bars on the side, and they're anchored at the bottom by all of these um, icons. So the QR code, when you put that in, it creates some dead space next to it, right? So there's usually some blank spaces in the areas next to the QR code. He's used that to put the icons that represent his different organizations, universities, and so on. And he's balanced that over here on the right side with the same kind of information. So that has given the whole poster a weight. You see sometimes posters that use colored gradients, lighter at the top and darker at the bottom. I'll show you some examples of those in a minute. It's difficult to make those work. I don't recommend them because of that, but he has done the same thing by putting his QR codes and his university logos down here. And as Mike said, they're not the most important thing, but they need to be there. It's got a picture of the author. It's got a picture of the author where you can actually see his face. Now, if he's standing there, it's not as important. But if he's not standing there, as he is in all our cases, you want a picture of yourself on the poster so that when people look at this, they can associate you with the poster. And then they see you in the hallway, they say, I really liked your poster. And you've made a contact with someone outside of the poster session. So I think a, po a picture of yourself is an essential feature, a picture of yourself that is clear, not a picture of yourself standing in the field with your favorite plant, which shows that you love the plants, but it doesn't let someone identify you. The picture, the, the reason the picture's there is so they can identify you. Eye tracking data. So this is, the, this is simulation of eye tracking data. This is from a company called iQuant. They do not work with scientists. They, don't, they work with only the big, biggest companies. You can't contract with them to get this stuff done. They were very kind in running some posters for me. So I big thank you to iQuant for doing this. Here's what we saw 
eye tracking with um, Milan's poster. Where do the people look? They look in the center. Red means this is where they're looking most. They're looking exactly where you want them to look in order to get the information. And they're looking at the QR code. That's kind of amazing there. They're not looking very much at the sides, but you don't need to look at the sides. You want them to get the main point of your poster. This is eye, eye tracking data or simulations of eye tracking data from the first three seconds. So this is someone walking by your poster and seeing um, if, they if they're interested. They are obviously going to be interested in this poster. And Milan says that he was in this room with 1,000 other posters. He had never less than two people at his poster. He had people crowding around his poster when there was no one on either side of them. He said he felt pretty bad for those people on the other side of them. This is what a good poster design can do for you. It can attract people when other posters are just being ignored. And it can deliver to them something important about your research. Mike, do you have any comments about this poster or things? Um, no, I think this obviously this is kind of what I expected. You know, like how you can't miss it. Um, I think it's interesting that they focus on those keywords. I think when people walk through a poster session, they're looking for those keywords they understand, but it, it is just great. I'm glad it performed well. Did you, did you send this to Milana? I bet he'd love to see this. I did. I sent it to him. Okay, great. Yeah, no, keep going. You're good. So here's a very unusual design. I wanted to show you another one that's um, really non-traditional to show you that you don't have to do the better poster way, but you do have to do, you have to follow all the principles that, Mike has laid down in Better Poster. Now, the Better Poster works great, and please do it if you like it. But if people are saying, I just can't do it, I'm not going to do Mike's. So use the same kind of principles that Mike is talking about. So what kind of principles do we see in this, in this poster? There are problems with it, but there are some really good things about it. Let's first of all, just look at the general outline of the poster. We've got a picture of the author up here. We have a very unusual design that is very destabilizing. You don't know where to look on it. And so where, what she did to fix that was she put pictures on the four corners. And that has stabilized the poster so that you're going to be focusing on the middle. And what do you see when you look in the middle? You see what, that they're doing a modeling study and that the modeling study has some results here. Now, she's put a lot of data here. On this really too much data to see. But I know some people want to really include a lot of data. She's done it in a very effective way. You're going to have to get really close to see that data, but you can get in there and look at it if you want to. All of her points are made with, with bullet points. They come, and so they're easy to read and easy to follow through what it is. The arrow, how to flow through this poster, because you need the arrows there with an unusual poster design like this. The problem with her is she hasn't got a good title. It's, it's a general scientific title. This is a poster from 2012, so we don't expect a QR code at that early. Of course, that would really help, but it was a very early poster compared to what the use of QR codes. And as I say, the title doesn't really um, catch you in terms of putting her main result out there. Other than that, I think it's a great poster. And the, the eye tracking data shows that it works. So they're looking at the top of the poster. They're looking a little bit at the title, but then they're looking right in the center where I, where I said they're going to look because it's, the poster is anchored with those four pictures on the side. The center part of the poster has something that is relevant to this. And they're looking at, they're doing modeling and they do the found that they see what they found and they followed up with the found to see what the species are that they're working on. That's what you want. You've got their track, you've attracted people and now they're going to, want to walk in and find out more about how this poster works. So another very, very different design, but another really great design. But it's idiosyncratic, right? You couldn't reproduce this design on your same poster. So the main takeaways here are use the center effectively, put really important information there, use images to attract attention, the images have to be relevant to what you want the author, what you want the um, visitors to take away and use a good title. Use a title that succinctly ex expresses your results. Mike, you've never seen this poster or do you have any things you'd like to add? I've, no, I've never seen it. I think um, 
maybe a, a key takeaway, I think that there's a lot of effort you have to put in to get something from this, um, except that it's about birds. Um, and I think maybe some kind of low effort layer would help. Um, you really like try to really teach in five seconds. Don't just say something in five seconds. Like if they don't read anything else, if they just walk by it, help them take away something. Yeah, I think that would be better. That's what I was trying to get at with the title. And she's yeah. down here in the conclusions that really should be in the title. Um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, same deal. Yeah. And then bring, the, bring those, highlight those, those features out there. I mean, this, <clears throat> she did this when she's a graduate student. If you look on Figshare and you look for um, Nicole Barker, you'll find other posters that she's done. They're all pretty good. And she's maintained same kind of design sense in all the posters that she's done this. This was that, 2012. That, that's great. I think that she's putting them on Figshare to me. Like she's putting them on Figshare and she's trying really novel things with posters to me as a sign of somebody who's doing a really good job with posters. And like, you know, she's already breaking the tradition with this, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, I think this is, this is really great. Bruce, if I could add something, kind of the elephant in the room. Um, some of us are students and we have advisors who are pushing a particular type of um, poster design. And if you find yourself in that situation, then uh, Nicole is giving us some opportunities to push in, in, in the right direction while sticking within a particular template that may not be effective. Right. And uh, we'll, let's, we'll, look at some other, we'll look at a couple other examples of posters here just in the next couple of slides. And you'll see other ways of doing this that are more traditional, but you've got to keep these ideas in mind that you're trying to communicate your essential result. You don't read posters. Most people don't read posters left to right. Um, they read them by looking at the center. They read them as pictures. There is an exception now. Mike's new designs that have that take advantage of the F-shaped scanning pattern are different. If you use one of those designs, you would do, be doing both. You'd be taking a advantage of people's wanting to get the essence of the poster right away and the fact that they are likely to read in an F-shaped scanning pattern. Those are really great new designs. But I hadn't thought about that. I'd seen those designs. I hadn't thought about them in this context, so I didn't include them here. I'm glad that Mike mentioned them. Oh, I do want to say um, I am writing a book on <clears throat> short communication and it will include posters. And so it's gonna say most of these things in there. And so we hope that it's gonna be out in about a year. We're still in the process of writing it. I've just sent the poster chapters to Mike for comments. And so there'll be some ammunition out there. If you wanna say, I wanna design a poster in a different way, there'll be some, uh, a published book out there saying, do it, do it this I will. That, that's super helpful. I can, now I can refer people to your book, Bruce. I wanted to add to this, maybe this is too bitter, but like, if your advisor tells you you can't, if your advisor in science tells you you're not allowed to experiment, like that's a red flag, right? Like, um, and I think like that's usually they're wrong to me. Like, and, and if you can have ammunition, especially if there isn't a lot of evidence behind the traditional design. So if you have, if you have Bruce's book, if you have this webinar, if you have, forget my layouts, just use every reference I cited in that SQL video. Like you have a lot of evidence on your side for trying something different. And the video, I sent you a link to Mike's website. He's on Open Science Framework. Um, and all of his stuff is in the public domain. So his two videos are linked there and you can watch them there. They're also on YouTube, but you can find them at that link. And so that's in the chat. So here's another poster. This is from last year's botany meetings. It's a really nice design. Some unique things that they've done here. Look at the colors. They've linked things thematically with color. So they've got a top title. It's a good title. Um, it summarizes the main point of the research. That's reinforced by the data in the center of the poster. And then the color tells them there's a thematic link to the data that's put over here on the, on the right, which tells you more about the bees. And then there's the research question over here. And so the green, then you can say, is kind of background stuff, discussion, methods, right? These are all less important things. They could even be de-emphasized more than they are, but the difference in the color shows that here. We've got the author's names up at the top, but they're not really big. I'd like to see a picture of them. The picture of the authors is down here in the corner with their really tiny text with their acknowledgments and some references, which is that's nice that it's so small, but I'd really like to see their faces here. Not just that they love their research, which is great, but I'd like to see what they look like in these pictures. Their school is down, down here in the lower left and that's a good place for it. 
It's a little large, but not bad. Overall, a really, ni a really nice poster. Um, I would li have liked to see these diagrams of the bees over here so that there was a really clear link. I'd like to see these abbreviations a little clearer. My, these are minor points, a very nice kind of design. The eye tracking data is not as good here. And we're seeing that F-shaped pattern. So looking for data here. Now remember, this is the first three seconds. And this is a generalist looking at this. This is, it may represent how a scientist, but it may not. A scientist may look at these graphs a lot more um, closely than the eye tracking data suggests they were. So here's a case where it may not be, the eye tracking data may not be correct. But we do see the edge pattern and we see them trying to find meaning in the title down the poster and then looking across and they pick up the name pollinator and from there they would probably go on to look at the graphs. When I first looked at this poster, I was first attracted to the graphs as a scientist. Mike, again, this is a poster you haven't seen before. I have not seen this one. Um, I love the way they went for the size of the graphs. You know, like small graphs are usually a bad thing and this, they really went for it with this. I love the little bees in there. Um, it's just great. I think probably just more negative space around the punchline would have fixed the eye tracking. Um, like if they had gone like, you know, 75% of the size and left more space to discover that punchline, it probably would have helped with the eye tracking. Mike, can you give us a quick definition of negative space? Oh, sure, sure, of course, sorry. Basically, it's empty space. Um, so like the amount of space around the text. If you think of like right now when you read the top, like native bees vary in quantity, um, your eye is trying to, like you read kind of ahead a little bit. And so you're trying to like filter out those sides. You're filtering out like that black border on the left. You're filtering out like the graph below it kind of encroaching on it, right? And you're, that, that's cognitive load, right? If there were just empty pink space around it, you wouldn't have to filter as much and it creates more contrast. And so usually your eye will go to wherever the most contrast is first. And so um, here, I guess, the, I guess they're trying to make sense of the graph first. They go to the graph first because it's the biggest, that's the biggest contrast. But I think, yeah, adding some empty space. Um, I don't know why it's called negative, but it is like the idea of empty space around, around the signal um, to help you detect it, if that makes sense. Is that helpful? Yes, thank you. I, I was just concerned because we have international audience here. Oh, sure. Yes, I, it is um, the space around the signal, the space that sets off the signal. <clears throat> and we differentiate it from what's called dead space. There's an example of dead space here also. See this little space right here? It's not doing anything. This space is just captured. It's not helping and set off anything. This image could have been made a little bit bigger, could have cropped it a little better, extended it out this way a little better made it fit with these other images a little better and you would have gotten rid of that dead space there. That's not the same thing as negative space. Negative space on Milan's poster with a big blue center. That's a great example of that. The information is right in the center. It's got a blank space around it that says really pay attention to what's in the center there. That's a beautiful example of negative space. So we do not want posters that look like this. What happens if we make a poster that looks like that with eye tracking data? So here we have a typical poster I took off of Big Share. Think for a minute, what do you think that people are looking at on this when they look at eye tracking data? Where are they looking? Where would you look on this poster when you first saw it? Well, we are getting answers in the comments. If you want to, I haven't, I've got that closed right now. Can saying graphs, um, the title, the middle, someone said that they would look away. Yeah, look away is about, <laughs> look at that. Case Western Reserve gets a lot of attention on this and that's probably not what you wanted them to know where you were from. Um, it's kind of all over the place here, a little bit on the title. They're looking for some information there. There's remnants of the F-shake pattern of scanning. Top, a little bit down, but there's just nothing in here to look at, so why would you look there? And then they're trying to find some information here. There's a little bit there. So they're looking a bit at the big, there's just not much to see there with eye tracking. It's not an attractive poster. I can't imagine many people would come up to look and look and read this. This is a poster where he's trying to prove something to someone, but it's not communicating with the audience in terms of what his results are, 
what's unique about it. Here's the same kind of thing, <clears throat> except it's got more colors in it. Think a little bit about what is attractive of this. What eye tracking would you expect to see here? I'm gonna reopen the chat. So pictures, title. Think about where on the title were you looking? Where do you think you're gonna, people in the first three seconds are gonna look? The pictures are pretty attractive and so people are probably gonna be attractive to those. Again, you've gotta think about what's the most important thing here. Do you want to know, is the takeaway message what your study species are or is that subsidiary and you want them to know something about what the model showed? Straight to the middle pictures, maybe here or here. What's at the top left? They said that's an, I, I think that's some seagulls shown in a diagram. So, right, they looked at the title and the center of the title there. So it's the title is set off by these two big words, modeling and albatross. And look at that, they didn't look at that. They looked at the biogenics of foraging behavior. <clears throat> so that's not actually bad, you know. They might look a little bit at modeling and so that they know something about your re what your research is about. This is kind of an example of what Mike was talking about, negative space, although they're using the words there to set off that center part of the title and it's focusing the attention on that center. And then there's some aspects of the title here. So basically a poster with way too much data on it. Um, it's got some interesting information that's attracting some attention. There being a, people are being attracted by the color and the pictures and you might get some people walking up there but they're not looking at the text and things and that's gonna be very off-putting to know what that is. Now, we wanna know just not only that they did a modeling study, but what the results of that study were. Now, modeling studies, phylogenetic studies, things like that often have a lot of different results, right? There's more than one thing that comes out of the study. Pick one. You can tell them about the other ones if you get them up to look at your poster. But if you try to put them all in the title, you try to put them all right there in front of them, they're not gonna look at it and you don't get a chance to tell them any. So pick one, pick the most important one, highlight that in your poster, make sure your visuals are related to that. Make sure that the poster's got a good design, you'll draw them in and then you can tell them about the other results that you've got and they'll be interested in it by that point. 